And the question you're raising is, where did this complex code come from? Well, right, and what we've understood since the time of Watson and Crick and from what's called the, the period of the 1950s and 60s, which we now refer to as the molecular biological revolution, is that information is running the show inside living systems. It's a little bit like what goes on at the Boeing plant up in Seattle where I live, where the engineers use a technology called CAD-CAM, Computer Assisted Design and Manufacturing, where an engineer will sit at his or her console, write some code for building a particular part for the airplane with the, at an assembly center, and the code will go down a wire. It will be translated into another machine code that can be read by the assembly center. And then, uh, for example, if you're building an airplane wing, the assembly arm may take the instructions and put the rivets at exactly the right place in accord with the engineer's instructions. So you have digital code being written by an engineer directing the construction of a mechanical part. And inside cells, what we have is digital information directing the construction not of airplane wings, but rather of proteins. And proteins, again, are the, the, the toolbox. They're, all the, they, they're the molecules that do all the important jobs inside cells that keep us alive. So the recognition that information's running the show inside living systems has also made us aware that if you want to build a new form of life, like a Cambrian animal, you've got to ha have a lot of new information. Every new Cambrian animal required a bunch of new dedicated cell types. Each type of cell required dedicated proteins. Each new type of protein requires, in turn, new code. So the Cambrian explosion isn't just an explosion of new forms of animal life, it's an explosion of information. And yet there are really big reasons to doubt that the neo-Darwinian mechanism can generate that new information. And in my book, Darwin's Doubt, I go into, uh, I explain the math as to why it's so incredibly improbable to think that a random search for new sections of, of functional genetic text could produce, even on the scale of the entire history of life, even one new gene or protein.